have you ever gone to like a silent retreat? Yeah, or a, yeah. Have I've, been you? To, I've been to lots of silent retreats. Have you? No fucking way. Well, I'm just, I don't you, know. It's such a, first of all, I don't even believe in yoga. Let me just say that. So you're not ever going to go to a yoga retreat? No, no, those things saying. are dumb. Those And there's always like two celebrities walking around that everybody talks about. Can you believe so-and-so was there the whole time? He's so wonderful. Well, I, shut the fuck up. Tosh Show. Tosh Show. Tosh Show for show. Welcome to another episode of Tosh Show. Man, I'm, I'm just churning these things out lately. Eddie, how are you today? Doing great. Good, oh, good, go. good, 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 good. <laughs> I'm excited. Ask me why I'm excited, Eddie. Why are you excited, Daniel? Because my family is gone. Ah. My wife's family. My in-laws were in town visiting. And that's always nice uh, when they leave. Here's, let me give you a, a, a great hack if, if you're in a position where you can afford this. I always pay for my in-laws travel. I book it. That way there's no, oh, because you tell people like, oh, you're going to come out for four days. And it's like, oh yeah, well, we, we, decided, we decided it was cheaper. We saved $80 if we stay for a month. <laughs> it's, it's like, no, no. I book their travel. And I book them on a direct flight, Tampa to LA. And then then I put them on the direct flight home. I always put them on a nicer seat on the way out. You want you want their their energy and their mood to be good when they get here. Because Lord knows I got six days of going, I'd say hey, the time zone. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, there's a, I have a few complaints. Hey, I'll tell you another thing that was insane that happened. My, my father-in-law, I, I walk out to the living room. And he's just sitting there, and I'm like, "Hey, uh, you're you're sitting on a throw pillow, like there's like it's just a couch with a couple throw pillows in the corners." And he had one down flat and was sitting, not <laughs> not like kind of half, like just flat out sitting <laughs> on a. Th- that's insane, right? A booster cushion. Well, that's funny you say that. That's funny you say a bo- booster because he is a short man, so maybe <laughs> he was doing it to give himself a little lift. <laughs> All I know is that's what I nap on, and now I've got pink eye. <laughs> no, I I don't, but I, I do nap on it. Like, don't you don't fucking sit on someone's throw pillows? That's crazy, right? It's basement behavior. No, you know another thing about. Now I'm just gonna go into a list of things they do that bother me. Her family, every last one of them. I I always like secretly give her eye contact to point it out because she does it too. <laughs> they don't push in chairs. <laughs> ever they get up from a chair they've moved a chair they never put it back where it was here's the thing i have ocd uh you know i'm i'm very organized uh i like things clean clean uh i like things in their place i also don't like saying thank you so i'd rather people not do things for me just so i don't have to say thank you <laughs> That's, that's, I know that's on me. That's insane. I've got a lot of issues, but they all, oh, Hey, we're going to, can we do the dishes? Can we help clean up? No, I don't want to spend the next two weeks trying to find wherever the fuck you put my stuff. They're always like, Oh, we're, we just want to be easy. Oh, no, you don't. You don't want to be easy. Just tell me what you want to eat and I'll make it appear. And, and don't say, Oh, well, we just want to hang. We'll, we'll just hang out. You're not going to just hang out. Let, let's do something. Let's go somewhere. The amount of times I just walk in and, and see four of them just staring at their phones on my couch, it's infuriating. I don't even know who they're texting. They're all, all the people that they know are in the room. Do we have any videos this week? Uh, yeah, we do have a video. Oh, all right, play that. Uh, this video is brought to you by Chipotle. <laughs> I can't imagine Chipotle would sponsor us, uh, but for real, if you want to, play that video again. (laughs) Sand or not, this is very common on the Venice boardwalk. I remember the first time I saw someone shitting on the street in LA. I was like, when I moved out here, I was like, oh, this place is great. (laughs) (laughs) Today's guest is a mental health expert. Mental health is so in right now. It's definitely what the cool kids are talking about and something our parents never did, like global warming and eating ass 
Isn't that funny how we just talk openly about eating ass and all of a sudden? That's such a difference. Comedians, for the most part, aren't exactly known for their mental health, which I'm okay with. I don't meditate either. I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. I get furious if I go to the bathroom and I forgot my phone. Why do I want to talk to a wellness guru when I like being grumpy? Because she has the greatest voice. Enjoy. Tasha. All right, if you're a person with crippling anxiety, then you will recognize the soothing voice of today's guest. She's my favorite mental wellness coach, even though I've never used one. Please welcome... <laughs> Rosie, I'm not. I didn't wear shoes for you today because I felt like that was. Like, oh, good. That was like, like, oh, you thought I was world. gonna come. You know, I love when I. I come assume in you're gonna come here. Just be like totally zen and like soft spoken. I think in general you're gonna have to just speak to me like I'm an idiot the whole time. If I were just like to meet you and say, "What do you do for a living?" How would you describe it? I'm an author, so I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. I teach mindfulness and meditation, and I teach yoga, and I, I'm a wellness coach. Basically, my world is encompassed by this intention that I have to empower people to become well. Do you ever blow up in a rage and like, yeah. like yell? and? Oh, of course. Okay. Do you, I, don't, I don't know if you're like just Hispanic, always remember? peaceful. Well, I know, but I didn't know if, no. I didn't know if your wellness trumped your roots. Oh, no, it doesn't. I still, the East LA is still in there. Just because I'm polysyllabic doesn't mean that I don't get hood. I don't, I don't even use the term hood. <laughs> How much does Headspace pay you? Oh. I, I mean, did you start out well. rocking, rocking there or no? No, no, no. I, I just started with them. I've only been at Headspace for about a year, but I was doing my own stuff prior to that. And then they came calling to you? Mm-hmm. Do you have a different voice that you use for when you're I, I don't like on the app? No, you know what's interesting is that I I don't, and I think that that's why a lot of my students like to do my practices because I don't change into okay uh -huh. now we're going to. It, although that some people might like that, I do. I like that. I'd like you to come over to read to my kids at night. Oh, that would be nice. I'd sleep. love to do that. Oh. I've done that before for my students because there's. Do you a, just call people your students? Anyone that listens to you? Well, there's specific students that have been practicing with me for many years, but I would just say f my friends. I think everybody's my friend. your students. My How students. much do they, and they just pay you? Uh, yeah. For come. many years, they can't. You, they, they, there's no, no end. They, there's no end to. It. I mean, there is an end. Oh, there is a point where I graduate them okay. and they okay. move on or forward with all the tools because, I mean, truly you hire a coach for a, a short amount of time, right? Because if, uh, if your coach is doing their job, then they will empower you to learn what you need to learn and then you you can move on. If somebody hires or if you hire somebody and they're like, oh, we're going to be working together for the next decade. I mean, a decade's not that long. If I, if, you, if I knew you could fix me in a decade, I'd give it a shot, but I don't think you could. So <laughs> I'm not going to start the exercise. There's actually this book that one of my like mentors wrote. His name's Stephen Cutler. I don't know. You may or may not have heard of no, him. No, I've never heard of him. He has a book called Nar Country that he just wrote, and it's all about the longevity of aging and how you can, in fact, teach an old dog new tricks. So, and that's like scientific. You wrote a whole studies. book just to say whole that. Whole book just oh, to say that. Jeez, what a page turner. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you ever meditate to recordings of your own voice? No. No. I I don't like to listen to the sound of my voice. This is the first question I asked every guest. Okay. Do you believe in ghosts? A hundred percent. I don't know. It's like I have two sides of my brain that one side can believe something or mm -hmm. see something that's kind of unexplainable. And then the other side that's like, there's no possible way that that is Could possible. Could you give me one example of something that you've seen that's unexplainable? Okay. I'll tell you a quick story. Okay. So when my boyfriend and I first started dating, there was a lot of weird things happening around the house, you know, like just very strange lights turning off, that kind of thing, which... Okay, mm -hmm. you can explain no, away. But there was this one incident that happened. We were sitting across from each other. We were in the tub. We were taking a bath. I know. Uh, it's fine. We had our clothes on. Pornographic. <laughs> no. We were sitting across from each other, and he was drinking a, a glass of wine. And as we were talking, I see this, like, misty shadow hand kind of reach across his face. And I saw the fingertips of this, like, misty, dark hand grab the top of 
the wine glass like that. And then you just hear crack, crack, crack. And then he grabs the wine glass and he picks it up and reaches for the top of the rim of the glass and just pulls it off. Like it was laser cut off of the wine glass. I have pictures of this I can show you. Because I've, I've told everybody this story uh-huh. to try and debunk it. Right. Like how did that happen? I hear, I mean, if you want me to, it, it didn't happen, you're nuts. <laughs> I imagined the whole thing, okay. I mean, you buy shitty wine glasses could be another right, explanation. that's true, maybe. Are you like an amazing, happy person outside of your work? This is a great question, by the way, because I always think it's funny when people just assume that because somebody's job is to teach people how to be more present, that they're like the most present people have no problems, are so not reactive. And for me, it's the complete opposite. Oh, you're a mess? Oh, yeah. I do what I do because of how big of a mess I am. Huh. Yeah. Well, I don't don't want to hear that at all. Do you you meditate every day for yourself? Every day. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I assumed, but I didn't. Yeah, I do. And How long? Typically... Like 45 minutes to an hour. For you, oh my goodness, that's insanity. <laughs> Is that too long or too short? No, it's For somebody it's that too teaches. Long. Really? It's so crazy. Tell, tell me what the resistance is because we were just talking about this. I, I mean, do you know that meditation is good for you? I'm going to say yes, I know that. Okay. I'm going to say that everything that you probably think I should do, I know I should do, and I completely refuse it. Okay. Right. Well, my my son is is in um, preschool, okay. and they have Reiki once a week. They have meditation every day, okay. and I just laugh. And they send me videos of my son holding crystals and like just peacefully sitting there and like having good thoughts and. And it's just the sweetest thing I've ever, can bring me to tears every time I watch it. It's just the cutest. And I just think about like the childhood I had, you know, which was my dad like saying, hey, go grab the ping pong paddle. Uh, I'm going to spank you uh, (laughs) right now. (laughs) Like just very different. Yeah, very different. My sense is as you're talking about your son holding the crystals and like in the state that you think it's silly. Uh Uh-huh, it's silly. But you also think it's sweet. But also for you, you can't imagine yourself doing that. No, I'd never do that. Have you ever tried it? Yeah. And tell me what happened. I don't think I think it was just like I started daydreaming or I fell asleep. <laughs> but what happens? Why the resistance to meditation? I'm just curious. I would just rather watch something on TV. Like what happens in your mind when you're sitting there? I don't I don't first of all, I don't it's not Can like you I be try still? to Yes. Okay. For how long? Is as long until I'm yelled at to do something. How long is that typically? I don't know. I mean, it depends. I sometimes they hide. I go places just so that nobody in the family knows where I'm at. <laughs> what happens when you're hi- are you what are you doing when you're hiding? I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just, but are you but that could be a meditation. Right. As long as sleeping is considered meditation, I, I love it. I think that naps are considered. What do you think of crystals? Of meditation. Just the dumbest thing in the world? I'm I'm kind of on the fence because I I almost feel like they're it's like the placebo effect, you know? I mean, some people really believe that they can harness energy from right. you. But you some know? people are dumb. I mean, there's what? two crystal shops near my house. Oh my! I two. You know? I have somebody that that represents me. I'm not going to say who. All right, but they were they've worked closely with me in my career for over 27 years. They're, they're a witch, first of all. Okay. When I go on tour, they'll like ram a, a chicken foot in my pocket or something like that. They always like give me money trees as gifts and things oh, like that. Oh, that's fun. Just, just every bit of it, <laughs> nonsense. But you don't buy any of it. No, but but I don't ever want to, you know, so dissuade this person okay, from- Okay, so you're doing it for them. You're not doing it for yourself. No. But what if it's been working? Right. No, I, well, hey, then great. Then I reap the benefits of it. Right? So be That's it. the way I see it. That's the way I see a lot of this, you know, like Reiki healing or- crystals i it's it's what you believe you know i'm look i was raised catholic right so for me there are certain things that like i wouldn't mess with you know like i'm not going to go play a ouija board or something because you, know you don't want to go to hell well no because i don't want a demon attached to me I, I i like it all i'm fascinated by it all okay but but this is what i personally i like i like spa music okay i like essential oils okay. i like to smell that stuff and I like uh, I like massages. 
that's that's and and that's a that's really great but that's a good meditation practice for you that's really good you know because it why do you like to why do you like to get a massage because i'm going to tell you why i like to get massages it's the only time i can have uh, a woman that's not my wife touch me <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's exciting i only like to have females massage me oh now i've never once in my life been aroused from a massage. Oh, you know, I've always wondered that about men. People always say that guys are like, oh, they touch close and blah, blah, and you get excited and you, um, it's never happened in my life. I've never been sexually turned on from a massage, yet I don't want a man to rub me. Interesting. What about what, this? This world overlaps with, uh, speaking of sex, it does kind of people. Yeah. I don't, uh, do you, do you, sex is fun. do you do that stuff too? Or Sex? believe in that tantric, all that stuff. Oh, no, where they like don't touch oh, you. Yeah, have the you ever tantric? Yeah, this you is have cool. messed with that. I've, I've, yeah, I have. I've it doesn't I've, work, right? I mean, it's nice. It is nice. Have you never? You no, of course try it with no. your wife. I'm not going it, to. You know the thing is, it's like we're so conditioned in our society to just like. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's it, you know. And I think it takes a lot more for, especially for women, to feel aroused than that's it does what for vibrators men. are for continue <laughs> but that's so not like you know do you want to rely on a battery operated device every time ours is solar but oh so it lasts a really long time well as long as she's out in the backyard um oh where are you from i grew up in east la yeah i grew uh, up in east it's la a beautiful part of town i mean <laughs> Yeah, now it is, right? No, it's I, I don't know. I, it's I crazy refuse to, to try. No, ever it, know anything about it. Really? Like, Why? Well, I just, I like. It's amazing. Again, I, no, I can't imagine it is. I don't know. You know, it's one of those things where it's like when you're a kid and you hear this uh, songs about Compton and stuff like uh -huh. that. You're like, well, I'm never going to go there when you're like this like white <laughs> kid from the suburbs in Florida. <laughs> yeah, probably not a great place to go. <laughs> you don't live in East LA anymore? I don't. No. I'm in the Valley now. Oh, look at that. I know. Is that what you always dreamed of? <laughs> Actually, it's the place that I said I would never, ever move to. If you're from L.A., the Valley's like the epitome of— Selling out? Yeah, or? it's selling out suburbia. Uh -huh. It's, you know— But it's not— It's I mean, safe. You know, it's just nobody wants to go there. You don't want safe? No. I want to live in fear. Did you live in fear as a kid? <laughs> I did, yeah. I did. Well, I grew up in the early 90s, you know, during— mm -hmm what is called the decade of death. I lived in a like apartment complex that sat right in the middle of two rivaling gangs. So we were always kind of caught in the middle of drive-by shootings and gang violence and fights. But the interesting thing about that is growing up in that kind of environment, you're growing up around other kids that are also experiencing the same type of, I guess, PTSD, you would call it. Do you really try to steal a cop car when you're 15 years old? <laughs> <laughs> I I did. I did attempt it. Yeah, I attempted How far it. did you get? I didn't go anywhere. Did I you just, get in the car? Yes. Did you close the door? Yes. Turn the key? It was already on. Okay. Did you, did you, did you call in? No, I just... I just put it in reverse mm -hmm. and then the cops pulled up behind and I just put it back in park and I got out. So I didn't drive away with it. Did you get arrested? Of course I got arrested. Oh, really? Yeah. I went to jail. You went to jail? <laughs> yeah. For that? You could have just like- Well, I didn't go to jail. I didn't go like, I I wasn't there for a long time. I got arrested and I got booked. Right. Yeah. You weren't, you didn't try to get like cute your way out of it? Oh, yeah. And it didn't work? They were not having any of it. And then when I got booked, the the- booking guy that was there he's like entering my information and he just looked at me and he was like welcome to life in the system and i was like oh jesus i will cut you yeah, okay and and jesus back to you now both of you doing your part do you have childhood friends that you're still close with yeah i do a couple because I mean, you some have of them, to well yeah i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> They're going to come after me. And then some family members that you just can't get rid of. Yeah, I think that's more of a cultural thing. Yeah, for I'm, sure. I'm happy to get rid of family members. Are as you? Soon, that's a good boundary to have. Oh, as soon as I like see the way they vote on a few issues, I'm like, you're out. How do you do? Really? You do? Uh -huh. Did you grow up being close with your family, though? No, I don't know. They were, they were great. I, I had an easy childhood. I had fun. 
I yeah. enjoyed most most stages of my life. I've never looked back on my life and be like, that was the best time of my life. Oh, okay. I've always been like, no. I'd... Like you're good with it. You can move on. See, I feel like I'm living in the now oh. at all times. That's good. You're being present. Maybe that's why you don't need to meditate or you feel like you don't need I, to meditate. I don't. Have you ever gone to like a silent retreat? Yeah. Or a, yeah have I've, you? Been to, I've been to lots of silent retreats. Have you? No fucking way. Well, I'm just, I Are don't you, know. It's such a... First of all, I don't even believe in yoga. Let me just say that. I, it's like, it's all not, it's like, go home and stretch. But doesn't it feel oh, nice? Oh, it's hot to... yoga. Oh, good. Okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to all sweat. I'm going to smell you. And then there's like two guys in the class because they want people to look at the silhouette of their dong. I don't like them either. I don't know why they're there. So you're not ever going to go to a yoga retreat? No, no. Those things are dumb. Those And there's always like two celebrities walking around that everybody talks about. Can you believe so-and-so was there the whole time? He's so wonderful. Well, shut the fuck up. We didn't talk for six days. Oh, Lovely. She just send that money to Ukraine, you assholes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. But, hey, so I've never been to a retreat. It was the <laughs> <laughs> You should go to one. Yeah. What happens in your brain when you're sitting there and, and not thinking, thinking? Can you get your mind to just be quiet? Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Oh, like, like, like. Sometimes I'll, like, I'll wake up and my, my wife's like, "Oh, I couldn't get to sleep. My, I just kept thinking a thousand things." Yeah. And I'm like, "What? What? Do you, stop!" And then I just roll back over and fall asleep for another six hours. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm kind of jealous. See, I think that's what someone should say to me. Yeah. Like, hey, you know I'm what? Jealous. You're, uh, you're, you're in the right space. Yeah, that's good. You're not. You don't need to do any of this stuff. You don't need to practice. Well, ever. I'm not saying you. No, don't. I know you're not saying that. But that's what I want someone to say. Oh, you want somebody to say that. I'm not going to say that to you, but I will say that I'm jealous that you can do that because that's ultimately the goal. That's the, Well, if that's the goal. You know, one time I, I despise acting uh, as oh. a profession. It's nothing I've ever been interested in. One time you, you move out here as a comedian. Okay. You're chasing your dreams, living yeah. in California, and it's so exciting. It, they, they want you to audition, and it's humiliating to yeah, audition. It is I've what it is. I've had to do that, of too. Of course. One time— I was like, oh, I really would – this This would be a good part. And my manager was like, well, I hired a, an acting coach for you. And I'm like, oh, that sounds horrible. And then I did it with this acting coach. And the acting coach told me after, like, we did, like, our read-through, he's like, that's perfect. And I was like, well, then I'll never, ever hire you again. And also, I didn't get the part, and I've never been a good actor. But – I, you know, that's all I, all I needed was one person to tell me, oh no, that was, you, you did it good. That was good. And then I was like, well, then this is stupid. And that was it. And that's all the reassurance you needed. To know that I, that this is silly. You don't like acting at all. No. But in fairness, I really don't like comedy either. Oh. Um. Well, it, it's because it's, it's embarrassing to me to think like, oh, I'm going to go on stage and tell jokes to people and make them laugh. If I think of it as an actual profession, it's like absurd and silly. Yeah, but it's also hilarious. Uh -huh. Again, I, I I've gotten to an age now where it's like I'm I'm older and I can go. Okay, what I do for a living is is not <laughs> that important. <laughs> true we need to laugh of course but you're gonna get it somewhere else if you don't get it from me so it's like you know one less comedian is not gonna affect anything i feel like you this are... sounds like a suicide note no i feel like you're you you would be like a really great spiritual guru mm. that you, should be your next job i wouldn't want it to con people into hanging out with me how is that conning i don't know just because i assume you need followers you already have followers yeah i don't i don't want them I tell my fans all the time, I wish they would just leave. <gasps> Why? Then I wouldn't have to go on stage. My night would have been better had they not shown up. <laughs> have you ever done a show where nobody showed up? I mean, recently? No. No. No, like back in the day. Yeah, of course. Where there's like, oh, there's three people, and you're yeah. like, but you're still itching to get up there. I'm going to make these. Yeah, two. like tell me what that was like for you to get mm. up there for three people and you just did your thing. No, I did didn't. Did it mess I, up your confidence Yes, at all? of course. I was like, this is dumb. I'd rather not do this than, than try to, you know, pay my dues this way. I think it's interesting. I, remember I struggled. I struggled for like six weeks before things really started cooking. Six weeks? <laughs> I'm teasing. Oh, my God. That was a joke. That was a joke. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> I'm like, I'm leaving. What about, where are you on therapy? You think we all should do therapy or no? I think you should probably do therapy. Oh. 
I can't. <laughs> Tell me why. Because I'm because uh, this is why I hate everybody that that lives in my neighborhood. Okay, let's say that they're like people that g- were born and raised there out in Malibu. I'm like out in West Malibu. You know, okay. farm bigger. You know, people we have chickens. Yeah, right, whatever. Bigger lots. Yes. So the people that were raised out there, it, it wasn't like high society back then. And so they're kind of this Malabamians mm-hmm. uh, and they feel entitled. And so I hate them because they're like, oh, all these new people here, like locals oh, okay. only. Yeah. I, I hate uh, anything. Anybody that ever says local, my son had a shirt once that said locals only. And I told him, I go, don't wear that. I, he goes, mom picked it. I go, I don't like it. I go, you sh- I want you to wear a shirt that says non-locals welcomed. Yeah, that's nice. Huh? Yeah, that's I'm into nice. that. I'm going to make that shirt. I'm going to make that non-locals welcome. I'd like to, um, somebody brand that for me. Let's anyway, go. then I h- hate everybody that is there now, like, because it's expensive now. So they've moved there because they've succeeded financially in life. And when you succeed financially in life, you think every decision that you've made is the right one. Yeah. You're you're constantly being told that you're oh oh Bob. so you can't be told otherwise. Right. So that's why I hate all of them. Okay. I only bond with my gardener. I sw- <laughs> like it's like the only people I can ever talk to. That's, so you don't have any neighbors that you can get along with? Yes, I some, but they're just so many assholes. I, okay, wait, I but what does where, that have I to for, no, what does this have to do with therapy? So <laughs> it's great. I'm I'm glad you got me back to the point. My thinking and I'm sure it's wrong, I accept that, is that the reason that I've gotten to where I am, this kid from uh, a shitty town in Florida, so I, I came from that, and now I've got all this, and I, in my head, think, well, all of those little demons is what what allowed me to get here, so I better keep them. Oh, uh, you think it's going to take your edge away. It's kind of like when bands, they get sober and then they lose their artistic bands Bands should never get sober. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I'm with you because I'm like, <laughs> what happens, you guys? The music has gone downward. But is that what you think? You well, think I, that- I don't know if I think it, but it's like it, it served me well. So is there a world where perhaps it will enhance? Yeah, but but why risk it? Like how much better do I want my life to be? My That's life's great. True. You know, I got a good family. Yeah, bills are paid. Things are good. Why, let's not let's not rock the boat yet. How does um going to therapy uh, damage that? Because I don't have. I'm not saying that you need. I'm not saying you have to go to. You therapy. You already told me I need therapy, so don't fucking. I'm backtrack. just saying, like, I think everybody would benefit from well, talking. I know, about but uh, you know what? I mean, you're talking about things now. So I'd I guess rather that I'd rather a therapist spend her time on a kid from East LA that didn't have so many things go right for them in their life than waste their time listening to me fucking whine is probably where my head's yeah, at. Yeah, like, but everybody's problems are important. I, I, I But uh, this is the thing, not, too. That's not true. No, it is. They're not, not yes, everybody's, it is. Pro- not everybody's problems You know, matter. I think that this is, th- so this is this is going back to what you, you said earlier about the all locals or all non-local people welcome, right? So it's like, how do we then create this community or an environment where everybody's welcome, but then you're already taking yourself out of the communal aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm not speaking for myself. (laughs) You're speaking for everybody else but you. Okay. I I have an app, or not an app, I have a file on my, uh, um, uh, a tab on my phone, always open. I can pull it up right now. It's it's a retirement uh, calculator, and you just put in how much money you have, and it'll show you how much you can spend a month, and like if you live to be a hundred years old. Oh! So I'm always just staring at that. It's not very healthy. I don't want to be in jail, and I don't want to be poor. <laughs> I think when when what you're saying your two biggest fears is like going to jail or being poor. Like I I would say that mine are probably similar to that. It's not my biggest fear. My you know what my biggest fear is when anybody ever says my biggest fear is and then they what? say something. There's only one acceptable answer. What is monsters? It? Like. <sighs> If it's not monsters, then I don't really care. But you don't believe in ghosts, but you believe no, in monsters. I don't believe in, the believe in monsters. monsters either, but that would be a real fear. If all of a sudden a fucking monster came through this wall. Oh, my God. What about the UFOs that they've just confirmed? No, those aren't real. Right? Yeah. Are they or no, are they not? They're not. Like, by the time they figure this stuff out, we're going to be gone. I know. That's so how I cares? feel. So I'm fine with it. I don't. It doesn't affect my life. 
I'm just going to continue to water my plants. Quit watering your plants, okay? Get succulents so they don't take all our water. Dude, I kill succulents. Oh. I can't keep them alive. You I'm know, a plant killer. You know my wife had a succulent for six years that she watered and then found out that it was fake? That's who I married. She watered it for six years, and then she found out that it was a fake plastic succulent. How? And I have to tell her that I love her, and I have to tell her <laughs> that I trust her with my children. Oh, boy. How long have you been in your current relationship? 20 years. You've been dating this, uh, a fella? Mm-hmm. 20 years you've been mm-hmm. dating him? Yeah. You know what you guys should do? What? When you're like 80, uh, okay. you should get married. Uh. <laughs> we actually were going to get married last year, but we ended up uh, moving to the Valley instead. Coin flip, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was kind of bummed about that, but I'm like, hmm, spend money on a wedding or buy a house. I mean, you can get married without spending money. I'm Mexican. Oh. Yeah. My notes did not say that. Mm. Should I go? Ugh, or... This is uncomfortable. I will not ask you this question. <laughs> I've always wanted America and Mexico to merge. I mean, this we are on Mexican land technically, but I just want it all. And Canada, why not? We'll throw them in. Let's just yeah, all be one all... power country. I mean, it'd be fun. I think it would be awesome. I just, for some reason, I I don't know. I just want to own it. <laughs> That's the that might be my favorite thing I've said today. That's so stupid. All right. Let me you were at Nike. I can't believe that. And you won't talk about Kevin Love. He's very sensitive. He has sad eyes. Does he? Yeah. I love him. He has sad eyes. I love him because he came to the heat last year. So he he was great. I'm from Florida. I'm from Miami. So I well, I'm not from Miami, but I lived there for a week. So Do I you say, speak Spanish? Oh, uh, un poquito. No. I lived in Miami forever. All my friends are Cuban and Puerto Rican. And you Mo- don't speak Espanol? None. Really? None. Like, like all my closest friends are Latino. And I just refuse. I just tell them, you're on my country. You're my oh, country. Yeah. I scream. I mean, you're my you country. Them. You learn my language. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it turn the accent to now to country? A hateful redneck. <laughs> That's that's how it's supposed to sound. When am I? When am I, When are we gonna be told I can't do a redneck accent? Yeah, probably um, soon after this. Good. What uh, What's your feeling on cancellation? I think it's great. Cancel people. I think people deserve it. And I and you know obviously it's not a real thing where like the, the, oh your livelihood is gone. Yeah. Uh, but I as someone who's done things and said horrible things constantly. Uh, I, I've had backlash, and I deserve it. There, there has to be consequences, and yeah. I also don't think that there's a problem with evolving and and like, oh, I used to be able to say this, and now I can't. Well, fine, good. That's yeah. o- I'm okay with that. I like the opportunity for people to evolve and to change, but it seems like people are more interested in the like lashing out and sort of ridiculing as opposed to giving people the opportunity to change and yeah. tone, so to speak. I mean, I don't know that I've ever changed because of anything, but I, I'm i also just thankful that, like, no ex-girlfriend wrote a big article and it got published about me. I've, you know, no, no you know, what, I'm happy. That's great. That means I've had pretty good, solid relationship. It's also sad, though, because I think, like, oh, no girl ever thought. To do that? Right. You feel a little left out. Yeah, kind of. What is your sign? When's your birthday? Gemini. Oh, that explains everything, no, I think. Doesn't. It explains yeah, it does. nothing. There's more more stupid stuff. Here we go. No, it's oh, definitely you were born on May 29th. That on the cancer side of Gemini. That oh, means Oh, you're a cancer side of Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> that is so that explains so much. So you have that nurturing side about you. The oh. Geminis are two faced though. Uh-huh. But the cancer cusp is good. I'm a cancer and I'm a very loving and nurturing person. Do you have any pets? Of course. What do you have? I have three pit bulls. They're all rescues. Oh, I'm a do-gooder. I know. So great of you to do that. I know. You know what bothers me about pit bulls? What? As someone who donates tons and tons of money to best friends, best friends, great organization. I don't know how many pit bulls I've saved. I get upset if I, when I'm walking my dogs. Oh yeah. If I just avoid. And then I get some somebody going, oh, don't worry. My dog's super friendly. I go, yeah, until it's not. Yeah. You know how many deaths in this country uh, have been caused by Havanese? None. Ever. So, like, isn't it? Like, yes. It's never caused a death. Nobody's ever died because of a Havanese. <laughs> oh my so, God. 
fucking leave me alone and my little dog. Uh, all right, so you got three dogs. That's good. Yeah, no kids. How many kids do you have? You have two. 16. You do not. Well, I count not the, the aborted dog. ones. Not- um, so two. And then 14 abortions. Oh, my God. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, yeah. What if I was like Oh, uh, I named them. All, all of your all abortions? All of my abortions. Same, with the same person? No, that would be insane if a one woman had 14 how, abortions. How did you, how did you like do this? so many abortions. How do you have the conversation like with the girl or the, I don't know if you were you mm-hmm. girlfriends or one night stands or whatever no, you no, decided no, the, to do? How did I have what conversation? Like, we're going to not have this child. Well, the, you know, see that it's heavy gaslighting. Uh, heavy gaslighting. Do you maybe do you have kids outside that you don't know about? Oh, there's a strong possibility. But it'd be crazy for that person not to have uh, surfaced said. to get a paycheck by now. Like, what are they waiting on for me to hit like my second stride with this show? <laughs> this show's gonna be amazing. I know, it's, but we have to end this interview because it, they had to turn the air conditioner off yeah. for us to do the interview, it's and then hot. and now it's like it's gotten warm. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to ask you. To leave? To leave. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. I uh, will take almost everything you said into consideration, and I will try to uh, maybe take a little more time out for my own mental well-being in the future. Mm-hmm. Sincerely. Okay. All right. Pasha. Well, Carl, I'm fixed. Rosie did it. Uh, thank you for being on the show, Rosie. That was uh, eye-opening. I hope I can evolve as a person. Oh, God. That is a tough pill to swallow. I'll be doing stand-up in Reno. And check out boyswearpink.com if you have a toddler in your life. Uh, before we get out of here, as you may know, I recorded my son for one year of his life. When he was three years old, I recorded him telling me a bedtime story every night that he just made up. And then Eddie over there animated it. And now you're going to watch it. See you next week. Tell me one one scary story. Okay. Okay. One day, deep, deep down a big hole was a big lion. And it was not a tiny one. It was a big lion. The end. <laughs> that is not scary. <laughs> This is a hole, and there's a big lion in it. Goofball. Posh Show. Posh Show. Posh Show for Show.